I recently got two Godox V1 flashes for Nikon, and uh, I'm gonna tell you my initial thoughts and review on uh, using these flashes. So for the longest time, I have used these Yang Gnuo flashes. These have always worked really well, and I also use the radio triggers. However, I started to come across a problem where they just no longer wanted to turn on anymore. And so I was like, all right, now I should probably replace these things. And I had my eye on the Profoto A10, I think they're called. I had used them um, some in the past couple of years, and they were beautiful. I loved using them. They were easy to use. However, they are a premium. I think they're around like $1,500, somewhere between $1,000 and $1,500. And um, that's a lot for a flash, especially because I use flashes for our wedding photography business, but I also do interior photography. Um, and for those, I actually use a bunch of speed lights. And uh, so, you know, getting a bunch of $1,500 speed lights, like, oh, like, do I really want to spend that much? So as I started looking around, I came across reviews and things of this V1. The main thing that caught my eye was the similarity to the Pro Photo Speed Light. So the categories that I'm gonna kind of go through in this review are the just overall first impressions, the light, the overall build of the flash, the battery, the operation, and then finally the technical category. And that is things that as someone who has done flash photography for years and years and years and years, there are little tiny things that either really bother me or really delight me. And uh, those are the things that I'm gonna share with you in that last category. My first overall impressions of this flash is, well, one, it feels and looks pretty similar similar to the Pro Photo Flash. I kind of liked the matte finish uh, that they put on this. I was anticipating a bit maybe of a cheaper, lighter feel, but this thing feels solid in your hand and I really like that. The second category is just like the light. That is what a speed light, that is what a flash is supposed to do, right? Um, and that's where I don't really get into too technical things with like the quality of the light, blah, 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 blah. To me, a flash is pretty much a flash. Um, but one thing that makes me very happy and excited is that this, let me turn it on, this flash has a modeling light to it, which, oh, makes me very happy. The other thing that I'm happy about and the main reason why I bought this was because of the circular shape of the flash. Uh, what I have always had and always used is these like kind of rectangular shapes. I find it less distracting when you have a circular kind of cast of light. I found that, I don't know, I just like that like rectangle like seemed very distracting and you could notice it, especially if you're kind of doing direct flash. The third thing is the build. It hasn't felt kind of cheap to me at any point yet. However, one of the first things I do anytime I get like any piece of gear is I go through and kind of test everything. I open the battery, open like whatever, all of these little things. Now, one thing I noticed is that there is this little kind of cover, USB-C port. Now, I open that up and I closed it and now it just won't sit flat no matter what I do. So I'm just not going to touch it on my other flash so it stays there, but that's very annoying. I guess if it really bothers me, I just might end up like taking that thing right out. I found the swivel um, is actually quite kind of tight and is you, it uses a lot of friction in order to turn it. You know, once you put it into a position, it's not going to easily move and I think you know, that's an important thing for event coverage. Cause I'm guessing it's gonna probably like loosen up the more and more that I use this. The last thing is the magnetic add-ons that you get. Uh, I ended up not purchasing any of them because all the kits kind of were filled with so much crap that I was like, I'm not gonna use like all of these modifiers. It's just like a waste of time to me and a waste of money. So I decided not to get them and I'm probably just going to buy just the kind of magnetic gel that you can put on. Another thing about kind of the swivel and moving of the actual flash head is that it's quieter than my old flash and other flashes that I've used. So like if you swivel it, you really can't hear it at all. When you tilt it forward and backwards, you kind of get that traditional click, click, click kind of sound. But 
it is a lot quieter than this thing. I kind of was always aware of it, especially if you're in kind of a quiet scenario and you go. The fourth category is the battery. So right off the bat, I noticed that there were no doors or anything that you had to fiddle with in order to get the battery out of the flash. And I love that. One thing uh, that I forgot to say as I'm editing this video is that the flash that I had before used AA batteries. And um, the part, the reason why I hated that little latch door on the flash was because I would have to be, you know, switching out batteries in like the reception or something. And you'd have to like get the double A's like in the right spot, the right way around. It's really nice just having to, to recharge one battery instead of dealing with all these double A's. I love that. Battery chargers always kind of drive me nuts because they always like look so different Obviously, they're from different brands and everything, but I like that this just takes up a very small amount of space and the battery uh, sits vertically and you can just clearly see whether it's fully charged, it's green, and whether it's charging, it's red. Okay, so in these last two categories, this is where we get a lot more technical. The first thing, I don't love how kind of technical the screen and buttons are. There are like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. There are 11 different buttons on this interface. Um, and that's a lot. Uh, I think even the menus and how the whole thing is set up, it isn't particularly user friendly. It does take a little bit of learning and figuring out. Um, also because you're dealing with like icons and icons that are not super self-explanatory. So it does take some time to kind of learn how to actually use the flash. Now, this is something that I didn't know about before I bought this flash. And then when I actually got it and was testing it out, I was like, yes, this solves all my problems. And that is, okay, all flashes normally face forward, correct? You're like shooting directly on. The thing that is, mm, I love about this flash is that you can pull it up. Okay, normal, normal, but you can also just bend it backwards. Oh, finally. <laughs> you look at my old flash, it will, it goes forward as well, but it does not go past vertical. In order to have it pointed backwards, you have to, you have to flip it the whole way around and then do it up. Something that I was hoping for was that the flash would swivel all the way to the back in both directions. And uh, this flash almost does it. The other thing that's really nice is that this Yanggu, this Yanggununo flash, however you say the name, um, would only swivel the whole way back if you went counterclockwise. Now, this is a very, a very important oversight. When I had this old flash on my camera and you know, it's fine if I'm, you know, pointing the flash back and I'm taking a photo like this. However, if you want to take a photo like this, look what happens. I want to point the flash back and up. You cannot do that. You can, it, it goes vertically and it goes this way, but it does not go this way. So in order to do that, I had to hold the camera the like opposite direction. That then you could actually point the flash up at an angle uh, to the ceiling. And this was always super weird because who holds a camera like this, right? With the V1, you can actually, you know, shoot like a normal person and take the flash and point it up at the ceiling like that. And you're not having to like shoot this way, which is very awkward. The V1 goes down to one 256th of a power instead of these Yanguno flashes that only did one 28th of power. Especially when I'm doing kind of reception photos where I want to be able to maybe like take two photos really quickly. Um, you don't need a lot of power in those scenarios. It enables you to take a lot more photos at a quicker speed. Also, when you put this flash on the camera, I have a Nikon Z Series 6 II. Um, I found that my camera actually, it automatically switched my shutter speed to one 200th of a second. I always found myself, you know, putting on a flash and then being like, oh, I'm at like a thousandth of a second or something like that. And then having to manually put my camera down. So I love that, you know, it's doing a little bit of the work for me once I put that flash on the camera. 
Okay, so the last category is the technical, also known as the super nitpicky, like technical things that either bother me or make me very happy. I wish they made it easier um, if you're in manual mode to be able to move the power up and down. I love that uh, when I use the Pro Photo Flash, you literally just get the dial, you move it, and it goes up and down. This, you have to do two steps. You have to hit plus and minus, and then you have to go up and down. Now, it's not all bad. I do like the fact that you can actually, there's a little dial on this flash, and I like that you can actually use the dial to go up in small increments, or if you need to go up you know, in bigger steps, you can just hit up and you can hit down, and that moves the power up and down. Another thing that I don't like about the power specifically uh, on this Yanguno flash, the nice thing was that once you go to full power and you keep going, it actually goes back down to the lowest power and then it like keeps going. This, however, does not allow you to do that. If you're at the smallest power, you have to hit all the way up until you get to the full power. There's no shortcut back down to partial power. You have to click all the way down through. One of the technical aspects that is like uh, maybe a game changer is the radio connection between flashes. This, I was a little skeptical at first because I was like, oh, I'll probably just use my own radio, like my radio triggers, like this probably is not gonna work that great or you're gonna have to like go into this menu and like set it up and like, however, they make it actually very easy to connect the two flashes. Uh, you really just turn it on hit this like radio connect button and you set one to the kind of transceiver mode. On the receiving flash, you just turn on to the receiving mode and then you just choose which flash it's gonna be. You know, it's gonna be A, B, C, D, or E. Uh, so I'm gonna set it to A and on the transceiver mode, you just go over and you say, oh, okay, you just hit A, you hit it twice. Do you want a TTL or manual? And there you go. And it's worked pretty well on all my tests so far. Uh, we'll see if a long-term use of this will say any different. I don't really shoot with multiple flashes ever on a wedding day, but when I'm doing interior photography, because often I'm, I'm gonna have a flash in like a different room, and if I need to change the manual settings of that, I often just had to like walk over or have an assistant change it for me. But the nice thing about this is that I can change all of those flashes directly from this flash, this transceiver flash, without having you know additional radio triggers or anything like that. And speaking of kind of viewing settings on the flash, it actually shows the camera f-stop on this flash. And in manual mode, it also shows you how many feet this flash will reach, which is pretty cool. Um, it's not gonna be maybe perfect, but it'll give you a rough idea based on your settings, you know, does the power on your flash need to go up or not? And then the last thing that's kind of small, but I thought was kind of cool, I don't know if I'll actually ever want it, but you can have the zooming of the flash on automatic. So based on the zoom of your lens, it's actually it actually automatically zooms the flash forward as well. Definitely a way more intelligent the flash that I used to have from Yanguno, and it doesn't break the bank like a Pro Photo flash would use, even though I understand the Pro Photo flashes are definitely on a different level, um, and they're incredible, you know, a top of the line professional grade. But if you're looking for something that's kind of a sweet spot in between, you know, the cheapest flashes out there and the highest end ones, I think and I hope that these are gonna do it for me. Um, I plan on doing another long-term review after this wedding season. It's one thing to use this flash a few times. However, I wanna give you a better and more in-depth review after I've shot it the entire wedding season. Mm -hmm.